I didn't call you, Maggie. I called Brick. Well, I'm just delivering them to you, Big Daddy. Now, why'd you do that? Do what? Wipe her kiss off your mouth like she spit on you. I don't know. I wasn't conscious of it. That woman of yours, she got a better shape on her than Goopers, but somehow or another they got the same look about her. What look is that, Big Daddy? Well, I don't know how to describe it, but it's the same look. They don't look peaceful, do they? No, they sure in hell don't. Look nervous as cats. That's right, son. They look nervous as cats. Look like a couple of cats on a hot tin roof. That's right. Like a couple of cats on a Hot tin roof. Yeah, it's funny how you and Gooper being so different they got the same type of woman. Well, we're both married in the society, Big Daddy. Oh, shit. I wonder what gives them that look. Well, they're sitting on a pretty big piece of land. 28,000 acres is a pretty big piece of land, and they're squaring off on it, each determined to knock off a bigger piece than the other. As soon as you let it go. Well, I got news for him. I didn't want to wait before. I ain't gonna let it go for a mighty long time yet. That's right, Big Daddy. You you sit tight. Yeah. Let them scratch each other's eyes out. Yeah, I'm gonna sit tight and let them sons of bitches scratch their eyeballs out. You know, uh, Gooper's wife, she's a good breeder. You got to admit that bitch is fertile. She, she had them all day at supper tonight. And, they had to put a couple extra leaves in the table to make room for them all. Yeah, she's got five head of them now, nothing coming. Yeah, number six is coming. Shit. She'll probably drop a litter next time. <laughs> so I swear to God, I don't, I don't know how it happens. Uh, what happened, Big Daddy? You get a piece of land by hook or crook, and things start growing on it, just start accumulating on it. And before you know it, shit. It's completely out of hand. I mean, just completely out of hand. Well, they say nature hates a vacuum, Big Daddy. Well, that's what they say. I think a vacuum is a hell of a lot better than some of the shit nature replaces it with. Is somebody at that door open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Somebody interested in what we say to each other. Go. Go. Cooper! Oh, hell, is she? <laughs> Did you call Cooper Big Daddy? No. Did you want Cooper Big Daddy? Hell no, and I don't want you. <laughs> what I want is some goddamn privacy here so I can have a conversation talk with my son and Britt. Now it's too hot in here to close them doors. But if I ain't got to close them fucking doors and have a private talk with my son Brittany, let me know, goddammit, and I'll close. Because I hate eavesdroppers. <laughs> Don't like no kind of sneaking and spying. Well, Big Daddy, we <coughs> was just... You stood on the wrong side of the moon and threw your shell. Uh, well, we, we, you were just uh, spying and you know it. Uh, we, we, just shut up. Shut up, goddammit. <clears throat> now I'm going to move you and Gooper out of that room next to this one. <laughs> It ain't none of your goddamn business what goes on here not between Brick and Mike. Now you two listen like a couple of fucking peak on spy. <laughs> and you go back and you tell Big Mama on what you hear. And she comes tell me. They say so and so and such and such about what goes on here not between Brick and Maggie. And Jesus, it makes me sick. I can't stand sneaking a spy. I'm going to move you and Cooper out of that room next to this one. It makes me puke. Big Daddy, you're just so unkind for some reason those I really love you. Oh, <laughs> They listen, do they? Yeah, son, they listen. They go back and tell Big Mama on what they hear going on here at night between you and Maggie. Son, now they say you won't sleep with her. Now, is that true or not true? Now, if you don't like Maggie, hell, get rid of Maggie. But what are you doing there now? Freshening up my drink. Son, you know you got your real liquor problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, sir, I know. Is that why you put that sports announcer? Because of that liquor problem? Yes, sir, I guess so. Son, no, don't guess about it, son. It's too important. Yes, sir. Life's important, son. Hold on to your life. A man that drinks is throwing his life away. Don't do it. Now hold on to your life. Ain't nothing else to hold on to. Well, come over here and sit. Come over here and raise our voice. These walls have ears in this here. All right, big daddy. Now, so you just quit. Now, how did that come about? Some kind of disappointment? I don't know. Do you? Oh, shit. I'm asking you. How in the hell am I supposed to know if you don't know? Well, I just got up there in that booth and found out I had cotton in my mouth. It's always two or three beats behind the action, so I... You just quit? Yes, quit. Oh, son. It's hard to talk in this place. Nice, peaceful sound of clock. I like to hear it all night long. Shit. You got that clock over there in Europe. Me and Big Mom on that damn coach tour. Never had such an awful time in my life. And I tell you, son, them goops over there. Shit, they gouge your damn eyeballs out them grand hotels. Big mama, she, she went wild in it. She bought more stuff you could haul in a couple of boxcars, and that ain't no shit. Everywhere she went on that rural wind tour, she just bought, 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 bought. Yeah, son, that Europe, that Europe ain't nothing but a great big old auction. A bunch of damn worn out places. <laughs> And up with a great big old fire sale, the whole fucking thing. Big mama, shit, she went wild. You couldn't hold that woman with a mule harness. Everywhere she went, she just bought, bought, bought. <laughs> Half of that stuff was up in the attic mill doing. Yeah, lucky I'm a rich man. Yes, sir. That's right. I'm a rich man. I'm a mighty rich man, Rick. You wanna know how much I'm worth? Go on, guess how much I'm worth. <coughs> Close on 10 million. Cash, blue chip stocks. Just remind you now, 28,000 acres of the richest land this side of the valley now. But you can't buy your life with it. No, you can't. Once your life is spent, you can't buy your life with it. That's one thing they don't offer over there in that Europe fire sale. Or the American markets or any other market on earth. Once your life is finished, you can't buy your life with it. It's a sobering thought, son. A very sobering thought indeed. That's a thought I had turning over and over in my head until the day. Yeah, I'm wiser, Brick. I'm wiser and sadder for having gone through this experience that we had to go through. Yes, sir. Big Daddy, you on a talking jag tonight. The human animal, son. The human animal is a beast that dies. And the fact that he's dying, it don't give him no pity for others. No, it don't. Human animal, huh? You say something? Yes, yeah, sir. What's that? Hand me over that crutch. Well, where you going? Going over, uh, going to take a little trip to Echo Springs. Well, look, Captain. <laughs> yes, sir. The human animal. The human animal is a beast that dies. He's got money. He buys and buys and buys. So I think the reason he buys everything he can buy is because in the back of his mind he's got the crazy hope that one of his purchases could be life everlasting, which it never can be. Yes, sir. The human animal is a beast that dies. If he's got money, he buys and buys and buys. You sure are shooting the breeze tonight, Big Daddy? Yes, yeah, son. I've been quiet here lately. Just spoke not a word. Just sat, stared off in the space. 
I had something heavy weighing on my mind, but today that weight was lifted off me. That's why I'm talking. The sky looks different to me. You know what I like to hear most? Well, what's that, son? Solid quiet. <laughs> Perfect, unbroken quiet. Well, why? It's more peaceful. Hell, you didn't hear enough of that in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You through talking to me? Why are you so anxious to shut me up, son? Well, ever so often you'll say to me, Rick, I want to talk to you. But when we talk, it never materializes. Nothing is ever said. You'll sit in a chair and gas about this and that. And I look like I listen. I try to look like I listen. But I don't listen. Not much. Communication between people is an awful hard thing. And between you and me, somehow it just don't happen. Son, you ever been scared? I mean, have you ever been scared? I mean, just felt downright terror or something? Hold on. Son, I thought I had it. Had what, Big Daddy? Cancer. I thought the old man made of bones had come and laid his cold and heavy hand on my shoulder. Well, you sure kept a tight mouth about it, Big Daddy. Well, hell, a pig squeals. A man keeps a tight mouth about it, despite not having a pig's advantage. What advantage is that? Ignorance. Ignorance of mortality is a comfort. A man don't have that comfort, son. He's the only living thing that can see the death and knows what it is. All the mother's shit, they go without knowing, without any knowledge of it. Which is the way any living thing ought to go. Yet a pig squeals. And a man, he keeps a tight mouth about it. And yeah, sometimes he keeps a tight mouth about it. Son, I want What's that, Big Daddy? I wonder if one of them whiskey highballs hurt this here spastic No, sir. It might do it good. Son, I tell you, son, the sky is open, son. Yes, sir, the sky is open. It is open again, son, yes. The sky is open. Do you uh, feel better, Big Daddy? Better hell, shit. I can breathe. <laughs> All my life, I just been a double up fish, just pounding and smashing and driving. I'm gonna open up these double up hands and I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch things easy with them. You know what I'm contemplating? No, sir, what are you contemplating? Pleasure. <laughs> yes, right, son, pleasure with women. I'm gonna tell you something, you might not have guessed. I still have a desire for women. This is my 65th birthday. I find that remarkable, Big Daddy. Remarkable? Uh, admirable, Big Daddy. Remarkable and admirable both, hell. I realize now, I ain't never had me enough. Yeah, I had many chances. I passed them up because of scruples and invention and shit. All that stuff ain't nothing bullshit, son. I mean bullshit. Took the shadow of death to make me see it. But now that shout has been lifted, hell, I'm gonna cut loose. I'm gonna have me what they call it. I'm gonna have me a ball. That's right, I'm gonna have me a, a ball. Shit. A ball, huh? That's right, a ball. Because I slept with Big Mama till about five years ago when I was 60 and she was 58. Never even liked it. Never did. Son, can't you men hear that phone ring? I can hear it way out in the gallery. Why you got to come and go through this room? Now, there's five other rooms down this hallway. Why you got to come and go through this one, huh? <laughs> Why when Big Mama leaves the room, I can't remember what that woman looks like. Hello? 
And, and when she comes back in the room, I see what she looks like, and I wish she did. Hello, Miss Sally. Where you going, son? Out for a breather. Now, did you sit back down there until we finish our talk? I thought we were finished, Big Daddy. No, we ain't even begun yet. Now, you sit back down there, young fella, until we finish our conversation. Excuse me, my, my mistake. I was just going out to feel the river breeze. I'll tell you when it's over. Oh, Miss Sally, <laughs> you're a case. Talking to my old maid sister again. You're a caution, Miss Sally. It's well, gonna burn me, Brick. Well, why didn't you let me explain it to you? All right now, Miss Sally. You make sure you come visit us real soon. Big Daddy's dying to see ya. <laughs> All right now. Bye bye. <laughs> Big Daddy, that was Miss Sally calling from Memphis again. <laughs> you know what she done, Big Daddy? She called her doctor in Memphis and had him explain what that spastic thing was. Then she called us to say how relieved she was. Hey, let me in. No, I ain't. Now you back out. Go back to the mother rooms down that hallway. Big Daddy. Sweetheart. Oh, you didn't mean those things you said to me. Sweetheart. You didn't mean those nasty things you said. I just know you didn't. All I asked that woman was for to leave me alone. But she won't admit to herself that she makes me sick. <clears throat> that comes with having slept with her all these years. Yeah, I should have quit much sooner, but that old woman here, she couldn't get enough of me. And I was good in the bed. <laughs> I said, so, she should have spent too much of it on her. Well, they said you only got so many. Each one is numbered. Yeah, but I still got a few left to me. Yeah, I still got a few, son. Pick me a good one to spend it on, too. Yeah, I'm going to pick me a real choice for the spinning bone. I don't care how much it costs. Shit. I'm going to smother her in minutes. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm going to smother her in minutes. I'm going to strip her naked and smother her in minutes and choke her with diamonds. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a strip her naked and choke her with diamonds and smother her in meat and hump her from hell to breakfast. Woo! Yes, sir. Who's that laughing in there? You know, it's Big Daddy laughing in there. Shit, he's doing two trips. Why are you so anxious, son? You're resting. You got to answer your bridges? Yes. Why? It just hasn't happened yet. What had not happened? The click. You say click? Yes, yeah, the click. The click that I get in my head when I drink enough of this stuff and make me peaceful. I don't know what you're talking about, son, but it disturbs me. It's just a mechanical thing. A mechanical thing? Yeah, the click that I get in my head, it makes me peaceful. It's just a mechanical thing. It's sort of like a, sort of like a, like, like a, a, like a, like a click. Switching off in my head, turning the hot light off, cool night off, and all of a sudden there's peace. Jeez. Expecting death made me blind. I had no idea a son of mine was turning into a drunk on my nose. Well, the news has penetrated. <laughs> yes, the news has penetrated. So if you'll excuse me. No, I will not excuse you. Now, you stay right here until I tell you this contradiction is done. You stay right I, here. I better go sit by myself so I can go have that click go off in my head. It's just a mechanical thing, but it only happens when I'm sitting by myself or talking to no one. Got a long time for someone to sit by yourself and talk to no one. Right now, you're talking to me. At least I'm talking to you. Now, you sit back down until we finish our talk. I'm going to move this crutch. But this talk, Big Daddy, is, this, talk, this talk is painful. It's painful. It's going nowhere. Nowhere. Well, let it be painful, goddammit. And if you sit down there until I tell you to get up. You know, I can hop on one foot. And if I fall, I can fall. 
problem. Well, if you're not careful, son, you're going to crawl your ass off this plantation. You're going to have to hustle your drinks on Skid Row by the time. That day will come, Big Daddy. <laughs> that day will come. No, it ain't. No, it won't, because you're my son. You're my son. I'm going, I'm going to straighten you out. Now that I'm straightened out, I'm going to straighten out you. Yeah? Yeah. I got a report today from the arsenic plant. You know what they told me? The only thing they could find with all their big old grand sites and that great big old hospital of theirs, they just found a little old spastic in condition of the colon. And, uh, and nerves ruined the pieces by all the worry about it. <laughs>